When the Chicago Bulls selected Patrick Williams fourth overall in the 2020 draft, the first draft pick ever made by the new front office. At that time, by most, this was seen as a bit of a stretch. I remember at the time thinking, who is this guy and why haven't I heard anything about him? Because literally leading up to the draft, Patrick Williams was not even on most mock draft boards to go into the top 10. And while I was skeptical on the Bulls taking one of the youngest players in the draft and a player who wasn't even a starter on his own college team, after seeing some of his open run sessions and workouts with other pros, I thought, okay, maybe the new front office has something here. This 19-year-old kid you can see has all the skills necessary to be a great NBA player and a kid who is already looking NBA ready. And for Patrick Williams, who at that time was coming into a rebuilding situation because at that time the new front office was still assessing the direction they wanted to take from the roster that was left before them, he actually showed up well as the youngest rookie of his class making an impact on the defensive end, guarding the opposing team's best player most nights, guarding LeBron, Kevin Durant, Giannis, and he was also showing flashes of what he could do on offense with his jump shot and ball handling ability. But then, the Bulls pivoted, or I shouldn't really say pivoted, but they decided to take a new direction and approach by accelerating their timeline in trading for Nikola Vucevic, and then further in the offseason signing DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, and also moving on from Lowry Markkinen, effectively ending the youth movement and mortgaging their future on this new crew. And for Patrick Williams, his situation changed quite a bit, and now being expected to do more, but also being put around veterans and with a win-now mentality, Pat's development, touches, and opportunities was going to fall by the wayside. Like as much as we wanted to see Pat take that leap on offense, he wasn't going to be getting many attempts with Zach and DeMar and the likes of those guys controlling the bulk of the shots on offense. And really ever since Pat has been in the league throughout his tenure with the Bulls, you've always seen these flashes. These flashes are few and far between, but you've seen them where you think, okay, if this kid can just get over some of the mental hurdles and be more confident and aggressive, he can really be something special. The problem though is that every time we think, okay, Pat is going to take that leap, or that we need Pat to take this leap, that this team's success is very much dependent on him breaking out, it never happens. And to be frank, you really haven't seen much progress from Patrick Williams as a whole since his rookie season. And with this now being his fourth year playing in the final year of his rookie scale contract and set to become a restricted free agent this offseason after both sides failed to reach an agreement on an extension, the discourse around Patrick Williams has become so polarizing and shifting to where you now have a lot of folks saying it's time to call it quits. It's time for the Bulls to move on from Pat. The breakup needs to happen because it's just never going to work. And while I get the frustration from fans, I get the skepticism from the media of who Pat could really become, and I also get and fully acknowledge and have more or less accepted the fact that Patrick Williams is likely never going to be that player that we all thought he was going to be, and a player that probably should have never gone as high as number four in the draft, this notion of the Bulls trading Patrick Williams at this point in time just makes absolutely no sense. And if you're wondering why, I'll explain further in this video. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. First of all, as some of you know, I made my way over to Chicago, took the journey halfway across the country to see this team play tonight against the Orlando Magic. And I am fully expecting to be disappointed, especially with all the news that broke when I landed regarding Zach Levine potentially being traded. But sometimes going into the game with low expectations is the way to go, especially when the Bulls are going up against a team that they really don't match up well against. But regardless, it is always a treat to see the Bulls play in person. There is really nothing like going to a game and being in the atmosphere of the United Center. Speaking of going to games in person, it's truly one of the best experiences you'll ever have as a fan. But for me personally, the experience of buying tickets is always stressful. Are you going to get a good deal? Are you not getting a good deal? Are the tickets legitimate? How do you know that they're actually real and you're not being scammed? I once bought tickets years ago to a baseball game that I thought I was getting an amazing deal on the tickets, super cheap. And then when I got there, the view was partially covered by a scoreboard, which there was nowhere on the ticket or on the platform that I bought it from that indicated it would be a partially blocked view. Anyway, you're probably wondering why I'm telling you this random story. Well, it leads me into the sponsor today's video, Game Time. Because with Game Time, they take out the guesswork when it comes to buying tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events with incredible last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Wish I had that then. They give you all in prices that show your total up front rather than tacking on a bunch of hidden fees after the fact by the time you get ready to check out. And you can buy tickets in literally 
literally seconds with just two taps. It really is that simple. So again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Bulls Central for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Bulls Central for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, anyway, back to the topic at hand. So Patrick Williams and this discussion around Bulls Twitter, Reddit, and the like on why the Bulls should look to trade him. Now, I mean, the discussion has really been circulating for some time now when you've had fans down and out on Pat ever since last season, but it really didn't gain much traction until recently because Pat's very slow start to the season. And I feel like this discussion was accelerated when Darnell Mayberry of The Athletic put out an article on why it's time for the Bulls and Patrick Williams to go their separate ways and why Pat is in a desperate need of a fresh start. Now, the article was a bit more nuanced than that to simply say, hey, the Bulls just need to trade Patrick Williams ASAP. There are obviously multiple things that you need to consider before trading a player like him. But for me, I've seen this uptick in the hashtag trade Pat discourse since this article came out. And it's not even just from Darnell. You've seen this from other media reporters and beat writers saying, yeah, the Bulls need to just accept that Patrick Williams isn't going to work for them and move on. And I've also just had a lot of people ask me about it. Should the Bulls trade Pat? And while you guys know this, I'm not a reporter, I don't work in this field, I do this for fun, and so always take my thoughts with a grain of salt, but in my personal opinion, I don't see how the Bulls trading Patrick Williams benefits them at all. Here's the thing, whether you're down and out on Patrick Williams, no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, from him being the next Kawhi, which was always ridiculous, but there were those that had that view of him, but from the next Kawhi to those who say he's going to be out of the league and playing in China in just a couple of seasons and was one of the biggest draft busts in recent memory, wherever your feeling or belief is on Patrick Williams, his trade value right now is at an all-time low. Pat had a good game against the Bucks the other night. That was his best game so far this season. But even with that game, Patrick Williams is off to a brutal start this year. He's shooting the ball poorly. He's turning the ball over every time he tries to create a shot for himself. He quickly lost his starting position just five games into the season. And he's playing with little to no confidence. A power forward who can barely rebound the ball more than three times per game. And his one saving grace being a solid outside shooter where he shot over 41% on three and a half attempts per game last season is now at 28%. And that's an increase from just the last game. Through the first seven games of the season, he was shooting below 20%. And it's not even just the three point shooting. He's had a hell of a time finishing at the rim and shooting it from mid range. He's 33% from the floor on the whole. And so for the Bulls, what exactly are you gonna get in return for Patrick Williams if you trade him? Teams aren't gonna be willing to sell the farm for this kid. Maybe you get a second round pick, maybe a young player that another team is looking to do away with. And I know for some people, they'll say, hey, getting anything in return for Patrick Williams is better than having him on the roster or letting him walk in free agency. Bulls should treat this as a throwaway, cutting your losses and trying to salvage anything you can. Why? The dude is still only 22 years old. Yeah, he might not ever pan out to be a strong NBA player, but he's still young, hasn't entered his prime yet. And it would be one thing if this was a 30 year old player who just never really took off and is starting to show signs of decline. Yeah, sure, you cut your losses and throw the ass out of the window. But Patrick Williams, say what you will about his timidness, inabilities on offense, no bag when it comes to creating for himself and handling the ball. Yeah, it's frustrating for fans, we all get it. But he's still a plus defender, which I know some people will refute. But is he actually a plus defender? My guy Salim from Bulls Gold put this out there the other day. I'm actually going to go to the game with him tonight, by the way. But he took a look at some of the Bulls on-off numbers from various five-man lineups. And the Bulls, with Patrick Williams in the lineup, are a plus 3.27 net rating when he's on the court, while they're minus 9.23 when he's off the court. Now, I know some will say, well, a lot of this because since he's moved to the bench and the bench has been playing better, especially with Alex Drews on the court, he's benefiting from AC and his plus net rating on the floor. Not so fast, actually. Patrick Williams, without Alex Caruso, is a plus 2.61. But when Caruso is on the court and Pat is off, Caruso is only a plus 1.27. And get this, without either of them, and both of them are off the court, the Bulls are a horrendous minus 20.2 net rating that is comically bad so say what you will about patrick williams and this is even in the poor start for the year for him that he's had but the bulls are still better with him on the court and you know why because of his defensive impact yeah it's annoying seeing him on offense standing around not cutting the basket not fighting for rebounds but on defense he is a net positive especially when he's usually tasked at guarding the opposing team's best player so for patrick williams trade value at an all-time low but also the Bulls being better with him on the court. When a team that has a terrible net rating with the big three on, you'd rather throw that away, trade him for parts just because he's never gonna be a star? 
And then the other argument I hear is, well, the Bulls just need to blow it up anyway, get rid of everyone, which is why we're talking about Zach Levine. If the Bulls blow it up, they need to keep any of the few remaining younger assets they have. Blowing it up means getting maximum value for guys like Levine, DeMar, Vucevic, Caruso, Drummond, potentially Torrey Craig when he's trade eligible. If the Bulls go into a full-blown rebuild, Pat is a guy you keep. Not saying you build around him because I don't think he'll ever be that player, but at least a piece you can work with in a rebuild. And who knows, maybe you finally maximize Pat's potential when he's a bigger focal point on the offense, where he doesn't have to defer or sacrifice shot attempts because the team is trying to win now, and the expectation is to have Zach and DeMar get the bulk of the shots up. So while I'm not saying the Bulls should never think about trading Patrick Williams, they should keep him as long as they can because eventually he'll be a great player. No, I'm not saying that at all. But right now, as the Bulls currently stand, their future being uncertain, Pat's trade value incredibly low, but also likely being able to keep him on a very team-friendly deal because he hasn't been playing well. And because of all this, trading Patrick Williams would just be a very dumb decision. Other guys need to go first before Pat if the Bulls are going to go down that route. But anyway... Just my take on the matter. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hit me up if you're going to be going to the game tonight. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.